Hi, it's Paddy Hirsch of Marketplace. So capital adequacy requirements. This sounds like a really complicated thing. It's actually, it's pretty simple, fortunately. And the secret to its simplicity is in the name. Capital, which means money. Adequacy, which means normal. Requirements, which means, you know, something that you're required to do by your parents, or in this case, the government, which requires that banks have enough cash on hand in their vaults. Enough for what, though, you ask? enough to survive an accident. It's kind of like an airbag, right? You know, when you're driving along in your car, you've got airbags in the car, you never see them, you never know that they're there. And actually, they're very, very expensive. So if you knew how much they cost, and you could deduct that from the price of the car, you might say to yourself, well, maybe I don't need those airbags, because I'm a really, really safe driver, there's gonna be no problems with me. But of course, the problem is, is that there are other drivers on the road. You get into an accident, you have this huge fender bender. If you don't have an airbag deploying, going to leave you very unhappy, all right, because you're going to end up with your face smashed on the wheel or through the windscreen or whatever it is, and you're going to have to go to hospital. It's going to cost a lot and a lot of money. People are going to be very unhappy, which is why the government says cars have to have, new cars have to have airbags in them. The government says that banks kind of need airbags too. Only these airbags are not filled with air. They're filled with cash. Essentially, they're huge cash reserves because banks, when they do business, they actually don't keep a lot of money in the vault because they want to get that money into the world where it's earning interest and making money. But the problem is that they also need money from time to time to do business, like they might need to make payroll or say if somebody comes in and wants to take money out of the bank, they're going to need to pay that person that money. So they need cash on an occasional basis, often on a daily basis, and they get that cash not by keeping it in the vault, but by going to other banks and borrowing it. And this is something that happens all the time. Banks borrow from each other all the time, a lot of the time just overnight. You know, banks get, lend money out, they get the money back, they get a bit of interest, everybody gets paid, everybody's happy. But sometimes there can be problems in that system. Sometimes banks won't want to lend to each other. And when that happens, the whole system can grind to a halt. That's what happened with Lehman Brothers, which kind of like, although all the rest of the banks would say that they were in great shape then, Lehman Brothers was like a car that kind of runs into the center divider and crashes and causes a whole kind of traffic jam behind it of people having all of these fender benders. Right? So all these other banks seem to be doing fine. They reckon they were well capitalized, they had enough money, but they were still running into this problem because everybody looked at Lehman Brothers, said, we don't want to lend to this bank. Now we're worried about the rest of everybody else around here. Everybody stopped lending and the government had to step in as the lender of last resort and lend money to all these other banks. And that was what we called the huge bailout back then. Now the government doesn't want to be in the business of bailing out banks. So it says, well, how about if we tell these banks that they have to have a certain amount of money in reserve? like an airbag for them, so that when they do have an accident, they can actually bail themselves out, and then we won't have to be bailing them out. So that's actually happening now. The question is how big that airbag should be, how much, how large that cash reserve to be, should, should be, because we know we need to have it, because it's only a matter of time, the way that our system is set up before we have another financial crisis. The question is how banks are gonna help themselves out, how banks are gonna sort themselves out, how big those reserves should be, because if those reserves don't exist, then we're back into the area of government bailouts. That will leave us all very badly needing a drink.